<laughs> Welcome to the root of it all. I'm Scott. And I'm Alicia. And we're going to be doing this week a deep dive on the interior systems of our new RV. Welcome to our Solitude S Class. 2930RL-R. And this week we're going to be looking at the inside systems and hitching up to our truck using... It's a Reese Goose Box. We don't have a um, standard fifth wheel hitch on there, but and I'll get into that more later, but instead of that, we went with a Reese Goose Box. It's really nice. <laughs> so we are going to go back to our normal routine with adventure videos next week, but these videos were just way too good not to show you. And one of the reasons that we're putting the videos out there for you is we realize that a lot of you, maybe like us, like a deeper dive video. And if this is not sounding like something you're interested in, go find one of our other adventure videos. Maybe that's more your speed. If there's something particular that you're looking for, we're going to put chapter markers down in the description below so that you can skip forward to various systems if you have a question or want to find out more information about I don't know, the water heaters or operating the slides or something along those lines. And there is a lot of information in this video. So we hope that you enjoy it. And don't forget to like, give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and subscribe to our videos. Like we said, not all of our videos are going to be deep dives like this, but this information was too good not to share it. So enjoy. All right, Nothing. we're going to do the same thing that we did outside. We're just going to go around the coach, going to make sure everything works and we can describe everything that you need to know about. So we are okay. going to start up here. The electrical heart of the coach. You coming up, Scott, or are you going to I stay can, down? I can see, I can you can see, see it down here. I okay. can see everything from right there. All right, this is your convenience center. This is where you're going to check the battery. We're pushing in on BATT. Okay. When you push in, that lights up four lights. That means the battery's charging. Okay, it will also give you the condition of that battery. So your freshwater tank. Your freshwater tank is that water that you carry with you. We only have one light, that means that it's empty. If we had two lights, it would be one third full. If we had three lights, it would be two thirds full. You don't have a second black tank. Notice it says tank may vary by model. Right. Okay, but you do have two gray tanks. Okay. Now it's going to be my hope and prayer that your Gray one is going to be your bathroom sink and your bathroom shower. And gray two is your galley. You're going to realize that once you start camping. Okay, your gray tanks are going to fill up much more quicker than your black tank as normal. Um, and that's where you would find the condition of them. These two switches are for your water heater. You got your propane and your electric. Okay. When we turn the propane on, notice this light came on. That is your DSI fault light or your direct spark igniter fault light. Your water heater tries to fire up three times. If it fails to fire up, this light's going to stay on, indicating to you, hey, I'm not making hot water, something is wrong. So, you would turn it off and you would start troubleshooting. Are the valves open on your propane tank? Do you have LP gas in those tanks? And is the air out of the propane lines? The quickest way to get air out of your propane line is to light your stove and let it run for a few seconds. Notice it has extinguished. That means that it did fire up on the outside. Okay. If it still fails to fire up after you've troubleshot, campers are telling me that box elder bugs and stink bugs are liking to make their home in the burn tube. The burn tube is where you saw that blue flame. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> you need to blow them out. Spiders love the taste of propane. They'll build nests around that venturi tube. You need to brush them off. Okay. All right. Um, do you know how to find out how much propane you have in a propane tank? Um, the way that I've always done it is, well, there's the hot water method where you pour water the on the side of the, the hot water method. Yes. And then the other way is you look at the tear weight on the tank and you weigh the tank. That's the other way, but those are, those are the two that I've always used. Yeah. The hot water is the one that's readily available. Yeah. You know, and, and a little bit easier to use. Yeah. Okay. Not that it's any more accurate. It's just that it's easier to use and you don't need a lot of tools to do it. Right. We hope you're enjoying what you see so far. If you are, please hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. And if you want to help us grow the channel even more, uh, share the root of it all with your friends and family. That would mean a lot to us. That would help us a lot. Anyway, back to the video. 
All right, this is your electric. You do not turn this one on unless you know there's water in that tank by picking up on that pressure release valve until water comes out. Okay. This is a switch for your water pump. Notice the light came on here. We talked about your water pump briefly on the outside. That switch is a three-way switch. If we have the water pump on outside, we can turn it off inside. If we have it on inside, we can turn it off outside. So it's a three-way switch. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right, very good. The way your water pump works is when we turn it on, well first let me back up. The only time you're going to need your water pump is when you are boondocking and dry camping, you don't have city water access, okay, and you're carrying fresh water in your fresh water tank. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When you're hooked up to a city water connection, you do not need your water pump. You'll let the city water do all the work. Exactly. So, when we turn the water pump on, it's going to pressurize your plumbing lines to about 50 pounds per square inch, then it's going to shut off. When there is a demand for water, such as opening a valve, flushing a toilet, taking a shower, it's going to pump water out at about three gallons per minute. Does this t uh, unit have an accumulator tank or no? It does not. Okay. Okay. Can you get them? Yes. Um, I've seen They're... used motor homes come through with them in also. Okay. They're actually pretty cool. Okay. I mean, um, we, we probably won't need one, but I just didn't know if it had it or not. It does not have it. Okay. Something that you can add them. Okay. Um, trying to think, where was I? Water pump, water pump, water pump. Oh, the only time your water pump switch should be on is when you are stationary. Do not leave your water pump on while you are driving down the road, or you will have 90 or 81 gallons of water back here. God forbid one of those valves open up. A, you develop a leak. One of the pipes come you know, disconnected because you took a turn too quick or something goofy like that. Okay? okay? So that would be another reason why not to have it on unless you're stationary. Any questions about your water pump? No. All right. You have three tank heaters on here. One for your freshwater tank, your gray water tank, and your black water tank. If you are cold weather camping and you are anticipating temperatures below 32 degrees for an extended period of time, you're going to want to turn those switches on at 47 degrees. They have an internal thermostat that turns themselves off at 67 degrees. So you need to be anticipatory. And they will keep your, your poo from freezing. They will not melt your frozen poo. Okay. Does that make sense to That you? makes sense. No poop sickle. No poop sickles. Not in here. So turn them on <laughs> at 47 degrees if you're anticipating temperatures below 32 degrees. Your porch light. Your porch light's going to be that yellow light that's right over the, the the door here, your interior light, this is the only switch for those lenses, or for those those lights. Those lights are not individually controlled. Okay. Your awning light, that is the awning light in both of your awning tubes. Okay. And then the door side flood, DS means door side. We talked about that earlier in the demo. So your door side flood, that was that big white light here. Because when your awnings are in, you don't have light, they give you access to light. So slide out one, two, and three. You're going to operate them at the end of the demo. We're going to talk much more about this one near, or this, this one at the end of the demo. These two are for your awnings, and they are marked. Okay? Okay. Any questions about your control panel? It's pretty much self-explanatory, extremely it's intuitive. Fairly straightforward, yes. This is your distribution center. This is where you're going to find your 110 side. Remember earlier we talked about the three switches for your water heater. You have a switch outside. You have your electric switch here. You also have your circuit breaker. Notice everything is marked as to what it does belong to. So this is the circuit breaker for your water heater, just so you know. And then your 12 volt side. These are regular bus fuses that you can find in any automotive store. Some people will call them a blade fuse also. You can find them in Walmart or any automotive store to replace them. If one of these were happened to blow, you're going to know which one it is because there is a diode, a red diode right next to it that's going to light up when it does blow. Nice. All right. It is a very nice feature. Occasionally, you may hear a fan running here. That is just your converter trying to stay cool. Your converter is what takes that 110 power, converts it to 12 volt power, keeping your battery charged. It's also your battery charger. Your inverter, on the other hand, takes the battery power inverts it to 110 so that you can keep your refrigerator running and we're going to talk much more about that in a little bit all right you good all good any questions about what's going on in here none at all climate control this is your major climate climate control mm -hmm. so you have three buttons here 
the up and down button is going to adjust the temperature and then your rectangular button here that is going to change the mode right now it is in the off position each time we press that square button it changes the mode there's fan low there's fan high there's cool low or I'm sorry cool high cool low cool low auto and cool high auto if we are in cool low or cool high the fan is going to run at that speed and the fan will stay on and the compressor will cycle off and on if we're in cool auto high or low the fan and the compressor cycle off and on when it gets to the temperature that we set it at okay. if we adjust the temperature right now it's telling us it's 73 degrees in here and if i just press our up or down arrow that is going to adjust the temperature for us and there we go to 70. now your air conditioner is ducted through the ceiling the ducts in the ceiling are adjustable just by turning the vent cover itself on this particular air conditioner you have a quick cool feature where if you open up this vent right here and this vent right here that dumps the air right here rather than putting it through the vents in the ceiling so maybe you're not worried about the bathroom and the bedroom being cold and you're entertaining here you want to cool this area off quicker i will tell you that if you do open up those vents it does get a little bit louder behind this panel and this grid here you're going to find your filters the filter is a plastic mesh filter that you would wash off with a mild soapy water towel dry and put them back in i'll be able to better show you that in your bedroom now I'm going to cycle through until we get to heat. And we're going to go to extremes. Your furnace has three modes. The first mode is, is we're purging out the old air, so we have fresh air in there to burn that LP gas. When the burner turns on, the heat's going to come out of the vents near the floor. Grand Design is not a huge fan of putting vents in the floor due to the fact that they are huge dirt collectors. When we turn it off, the burner is going to turn off, but the fan is going to continue to run for about three minutes. That's a cool down period. Your furnace is going to be your largest consumer of propane. It's going to consume one gallon of propane for every three hours of continuous use. You have two 30 pound propane tanks. Propane weighs 4.3 pounds per gallon. So each tank has about seven gallons of propane in it. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. This fan here, right up there, you're going to absolutely love this fan. The one thing I'm not going to love about the fan is I found out it's actually a Max Air thing. That sound? Max Air. It whines. There's a high pitched. He it's not right now. It's sensitive to like it's, loud. Hold on. It's whining. You hear that high pitched? Yeah, I hear it. You just started to. I thought you just turned it off. What's low, max speed? Low, again, medium, again, high. There it goes. On high, we, it doesn't do it. Well, I know what setting you're going to have it on most of the time. Okay. That's going to create a nice breeze. Now, there is not a vent cover on there. If you planned on putting a vent cover on there, you're going to want the fan mate, the Max Air fan mate. Max Air fan mate is made specifically for that fan. Okay. It's extremely easy to put on. If I could just show you what you have up there. I'm going to remove that sealant just off that bump. You're not digging down towards the towards the roof. All right. Now that's going to expose. Just, all right. The fan mate fits right on top and it comes with stainless steel clips that you just put the clip in. It's that simple. It comes in three okay. different colors. It comes in white, smoked and black. Okay. In this area, what I would recommend, yeah. because I'm a function over fashion kind of guy, um, I would go with the, with the white because we want to leave that extra light come in. There is a rain sensor on there. Another reason why to get that vent cover. Number two, the, another reason to get a vent cover would be to keep the UV light off of the lid. The lid is going to deteriorate that lid uh, rather quickly, that UV light. Um, also, you will be able to use the fan when it's raining. It is extremely easy to clean this screen off. You see that tab right there, that one there, that one there, and that guy there. You just turn it, you just gotta pull down a little bit, and turn it, and then the screen will pop out. Nice. This light is for your island light, this switch is for your island light, this switch is for your accent light around your island. 
This switch here is going to be for your surface light at your recliners and for your dinette. You have a outlet here. This can't zoom. All right. So this is your inverter switch. That's the remote remote switch for the inverter. Okay. When you are towing your vehicle, or if you are boondocking, and you don't have 110 outlet, and you're not plugged into a 110 outlet, the inverter must be on for your refrigerator to function. Okay. So if you have your refrigerator full, and you're towing, and you're taking a long trip, you need to keep whatever's in there fresh, you need to have your inverter turned on. You turn the inverter on, we're just going to press and hold the button, and the green light comes on. Okay. So when you hook up to the truck, if you want the refrigerator to run, you need to have the inverter on. Uh, coming on, you might want to go out to, or there's no power going to your refrigerator, Open up that panel in your pass-through storage. It's going to give you access to your inverter, and you'll be able to check the GFI outlet on that. Okay. We have three switches here. You have your surface light switch for your sidebar, pantry. for your pantry, which is very nice, so and then your pantry? accent light. Yes. Surprise. That's value added right that there. That is value added. <laughs> Took that up, strap on the pantry door to keep it from hitting oh, the Oh, that's nice. Good. <clears throat> oh, and this is... Is that where the stuff for the washer Squirrel. dryer? Squirrel? Squirrel. Squirrel? 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 <laughs> you with me, Scott? I'm with you. Okay, good. <laughs> He's on to you. Alright. My name's really Doug, you know. <laughs> 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 Squirrel. Oh. I guess our wedding license doesn't work now. Oh! Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Got really deep. <laughs> Got really serious all, all of a right. sudden. Welcome to Tom Schaefer's Hi, My name is Jim. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. Okay. Moving on. You have shell storage security shelves are not adjustable. If I can point something out to you, I've seen it on used units and I've seen it on customers' units when they bring them in. The application here, or this frosting, is just an application on the inside of the glass. It is not etched into the glass. I have seen many used units, whatever they had back here, and it's jumping up and down and it's scratching. scratching. So, I've also seen some customers, what they will do is they'll take a piece of Luan and they'll put it on here, a piece of cardboard and just staple a piece of cardboard to it, you know, a couple, just to keep. I've got some clear plastic adhesive on order. That will work also. And that a vented one works better than a non-vented one, which right. I also have. But having separate units is gonna be much more rewarding for you than a single unit. Okay, well, we have not made a decision on this. This is something that we're still thinking about, so. All it's right. nice to well, know good. there's options. Yeah, so with that being said, Notice you have hot and cold water here. With the cutoff strip next to them, yeah. Correct. Your valves are right here. All right. Notice there's a bit of pink there. Yeah. And a bit of pink there. That's the uh, winterization. It's winterization. Now, those are straight stand. So you have your supply coming through here, and then you have a pipe coming up. So there may still be energy in okay, the stand. Okay. So if I can make a suggestion, put those up to it and, and drain both of them. Now that's going to go right into your gray tank. Okay. Okay. Now I don't know if it goes into your galley tank or if it goes into your bathroom sink and shower. Okay. Tank. That's that something that you're experiment. you're going to experiment with. Okay. It's working. And. In the owner's mount, it's going to it's going to show you how to run that valve. Okay. On that on the the sand stuff, so that you can run antifreeze out of there and also get that cleaned out. Okay. So just out of curiosity, how long will that uh, those two batteries hold for ah, up and running? Good question. All right. I have seen some videos and I've read some some studies that were done. Okay. On how long a 12 volt battery is going to keep a refrigerator running. So, 
there are a lot of variables that go into that, of course. The age of the battery, mm -hmm. the ambient temperature on the outside, Excellent. whether or not we are getting it from a new state to a cold state, in other words, it hasn't been turned on, or if we're just keeping a cold refrigerator cold. So, to get it from beginning to end, just running off of one 12 volt battery, ambient temperature around 70 degrees, it's gonna last probably nine hours. Okay. Because that compressor is gonna be running. Now, is that running the battery till it's dead or running the battery till it's at 50%? If it gets to, I think it's 11 volts, it's pretty much okay. dead toast. You're not opening the doors, ambient temperature's around 70 degrees. I've heard as long as three days, but okay. you're not opening the doors. You're not running that compressor every 15 minutes. Okay. Do you follow me? Does Absolutely. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. It does make sense. So there's a lot of variables that go into that. Okay. Um, here. Yeah, it's like, a, I, I don't have the, I don't have the second alternator on this truck. I only have the single alternator. Okay. So um, we're probably going to be. I know when I left, right before I left my previous employment, they were actually putting generators on rather than alternators on the vehicles that we were driving because we generators just, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot so of that's something you might want to look into. Okay. Let's say you're tooling down the road, you're going cross country, and you pull into a Cracker Barrel. I'm just picking Cracker Barrel because mm -hmm. you can park in the back, right? Yep. You usually spend an hour, hour and a half in there. If I can make a suggestion, okay, if you aren't going to be plugged into your tow vehicle for an extended period of time with your inverter on to keep this running, you may want to consider disconnecting your so we don't kill the tow, so you don't kill your tow vehicle's battery. Uh, absolutely, completely you agree with you. Yes, because if you don't maintain your your coach batteries which that's is very, very important that you maintain it. So with that, we're gonna back up a bit to our very first part of the demo. Mm -hmm. I asked you to change, check the fluid level in that battery often. Yes. Depending on what your camping experience is like, I would suggest that you, if you're camping a lot and you're running that inverter a lot, I would suggest checking the fluid level in that battery at least once a week. So okay. the first week, maybe you don't need water. The second week, it's like iffy. The third week, yeah, I need water. So then continue on. First week, second, third. Oh, every three weeks, it looks like I need to put water in. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. if you need to replace a battery, especially since you have dual batteries up there and they're running parallel, they're not running series, they're running parallel. Are you familiar with those yes. two differences? Okay. <clears throat> if you need to replace a battery, you want to make sure that you replace both batteries because a discharged battery is going to draw down a new battery to its age. Mm -hmm. Very, very quickly. Yes. yes. Yeah. It makes itself its own. It's almost yep. like a parasite. Yeah. All right. We are probably, whenever we replace batteries, we're most likely going to go um, with some lithium. of the lithium ion. Yeah. Expensive. Expensive, but well, well worth it now. Everybody I've heard says they're well worth it. With that being said, do you know that if you switch over to lithium you also have to change your converter uh, depending upon the lithium battery that you go with specifically we're looking at the battleborn batteries which you do not have to change your converter for those but they're one of the only ones where you don't have to if you went with the Relyon or the lion energy or any of those yeah you absolutely have to change your converter but battle battleborn is one You're of the fine. few where it has the internal circuitry to handle the uh, regular 12 volt converter okay Love that sink. Yeah. Just love that sink. You have your hot and cold running water here with your sprayer and aerator controlled by this button here. A lot of storage underneath the sink. Love the storage underneath the sink also. You have a GFI protected outlet there and you have one here. And your drawer storage here, here, and your storage here. So much space. And then you have storage above your microwave oven. This is a microwave convection oven. This works with microwave, convection heat, or a combination of microwave and heat together. If you've never used one before, I think you're gonna absolutely love it. Each time you disconnect from 110 power, you will lose the clock. No. All right, so we're gonna get this up out of the way. And we're gonna turn our knob here to flame, and we turn our igniter. Oh, that's nice. Is that igniter PZO or is it? It is PZO. Okay, cool. So there's no batteries needed. Correct. It is PZO. Perfect. 
and then your night light. Now to light our pilot light in the oven, we're going to turn this knob to the flame here and we need to push it and hold. Now I'm watching the pilot light here in the glass and when I turn my igniter, the pilot light starts. Okay, we have a nice see little flame in the back. Now I, I, have to, I see it. I have to hold this in for about 10 seconds. That's going to open up a thermal coupler. Scott and I, I have it right here. And just look in the glass. We're looking in the center here. You should see a nice blue flame there. Just like a blue dot. Oh, I see it. See I a see blue it. dot? I see it. Now. So when we're ready to bake, we go to temperature. Our flame comes up. When we go here. And my OCD kicks in and all the mounts. <laughs> you thought you guys were bad, huh? And you have storage here. That's a huge drawer. That is sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have your storage here and you have storage up here. I know this seems kind of silly, but it's just showing you that the hinges do in fact function. And you have storage up here. We're going to talk about the entertainment at the end. It's kind of like my wow factor. You have outlets on each side of the nightstand. On the nightstands, you also have USB charging ports on those nightstands. Good, good. Your surface light for or your reading lights is in the center of the countertop here. And then your switch for your sconces are on the light itself. I absolutely love these shades. I think they're handsome. Not only that, they are slow up shades. But they give you that extra privacy. Another nice thing is they are white and not black, so it's nice and bright in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you seen the black ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have. Oh, yeah. Once you close them, it's like, whoosh. It's like <laughs> really bad. All right, your bed. Gonna be a nice snoopy point when you're watching TV with the fireplace running. This you is have so fancy. Massage and heat. Make sure that the massage works. Alicia. Yes. If you plan on move, removing this, mm -hmm. please resist the urge to use a razor blade mm -hmm. or a pair of scissors. Yeah. If you visit lci1.com, go to support, go to furniture. They have a video on there on how to remove these safely. What they're going to want you to do is to use a heat, um, a blow dryer or a heat uh, lamp and just heat the plastic up and then pull it out of the stitching. You don't want to break the stitching. So once you heat this up, it's going to loosen up and up. When it folds down, then you can use a pair of scissors to cut it off the bottom. Does that make sense? All right, with your toilet, you're going to want to start off with your choice of... No. I've used there Happy is. Camper in the past. Okay. And we have a tub of that waiting for us. Success with that? Yes. Continue using it. Follow the instructions. Okay. You're going to start off with your choice of toilet chemical and at least two gallons of water. Okay. How much is two gallons of water? Fill that bowl up three times. How are you going to fill that bowl up three times? Press part way down on the pedal. That's going to put water in the bowl. Okay. Okay. So let's say you're doing number one after you get your two gallons of water in there and your choice of toilet chemical. This is AquaChem. Okay. Some people have an aversion to it because it's formaldehyde. Some people get respiratory difficulty because of it. There are some states that have a ban on it, such as California and New Jersey. You cannot use this because it is formaldehyde. You don't want to mix chemicals. No, no. We, we have the happy camper. All right. So if you're doing number one, we're going to push part way down on this pedal. We're going to get the bowl wet. We're going to do our business. We're going to flush when we flush it all the way to the floor. Okay. Notice there's a little bit of water left over. Mm -hmm. We want a little bit of water on there that does two things. Keeps that seal nice and moist, also keeps sewer gases from coming up. So if you're going to be doing number two, you're going to press part way down on the pedal, put extra water in the bowl so things don't stick. When you're done with your paperwork, you're going to want to turn off your stinky fan, close this lid, and then what I want you to do is I want you to push this pedal all the way to the floor and I want you to count to at least 15. The more water you put around the solid, the better off you're going to be in the end. Okay, keep in mind we are upstairs too. So this is not dumping directly into your tank. Okay, it's going down a pipe. Mm -hmm. So we need to get it down to that tank. 
So the more water you put down near 15 seconds should be good enough, right? Okay. If you don't put enough water around the solid, what's going to happen is you're going to start pyramiding. If you start pyramiding, you do not have enough money, and there is nobody in this organization that will take any amount of money off of you to <laughs> unclog that mess. Mm -hmm. That is going to be on you. Literally, it's going to be on you. Gotcha. Okay? So water, water down that hole. You'll Loud be and clear. A lot better off in the end. With your sliding glass door. Love this shower. That's a gorgeous shower. Hot and cold running water here. Your shower head is adjustable up and down. If I can make a suggestion, you definitely want to strap this in place when you're in transit. It's my understanding that this breaks rather easily. Okay. Look what this guy did. Pretty cool. I hope you don't mind my picture. Pull Use noodle. the pull noodle. Pull noodle. To keep them because these will shatter. And that's the picture I was looking for. I was looking for the shattered one. This poor lady, it was in a reflection. Uh, she went to one of those places that uh, hand you the keys and say, have a good trip. And they don't do a demo and teach you how to use your unit. First time she got to her campsite, they were shattered. Oh, that's horrible. Um, we were going to talk about social media. And you know Grand Design has a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Also, there are Facebook pages that are specific for your model and brand. So in other words, for solitude and whatever your model number is. Yeah. This way you can exchange information there. Love this. This. Uh, yeah, that, that is a huge vanity compared to a lot of... It is really nice. Um, this is your master GFI outlet. Okay. Okay. That's so, the one that has the switch then. Exactly. So if you don't have... <laughs> Perfect. Um, if you don't have power at your outside or around your kitchen sink, you want to come here to reset it. Hot and cold running water here. That's a nice big bowl. And it's a storage underneath this. Really room. deep vanity. Again, your... Did you do this one too, Alicia? No, I did both of them. I thought Alicia did that one. I did one, you did the other. Plus, that's oh, how it worked. Then I, then I undid it and redid it. So, I know you, you do want them strapped in place, then they will go back and forth and, 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 and they will uh, cause damage. Kiddo, they're just going to show mom and dad that things are working. Okay? And then soon this will be your house. Very soon. That is so sweet. That is so super nice. I love that. I haven't heard anything bad about them. I, I and I don't know if you will, but you have outlets on each side of the nightstand. You have uh, USB charge okay, ports. That's the switch up there. Yep. That's just so nice to have nightstands. Oh, and these things are deep in here. Too. They sure are. Be a nice place for a litter box. <laughs> no, 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 we, we got other we plans got for that one. For that. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dakota, we're gonna have to move the bed just a little bit. You wanna come down? I'll get her up here. Oh. I don't know that I want to scare her. So she, we'll go she's slow, not gonna be gentle. Gonna go slow. Be woo. And then you have storage under there. That is a lot of storage. I've had people say okay? that they have cut here and put their litter box there. So I people have heard that as an option. Cut that too. I was gonna get to that. Yeah. I was gonna get to that because you have that shoe well down there. Exactly. This is your remote for this TV. Okay. Basically what I did was just show you that it does work. Did you operate all your drawers there make sure that they're functioning? That the is the next to? thing on my list. And then you can store this where you want to in here, unless you want to take it out front. Do not remove. I think that's more of a message for me than it uh -oh. is for you. Hmm? That one's just really... Oh, okay. That's we're gonna... not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. These things are all tighter than they were on the reflection. Uh-huh. It's good. So right. TV works. Your air conditioner, same like the one in, in your in your living area. You open up these vents, you're gonna dump the air right here rather than force it through the, the vents in this area. Your there filters you are behind this grid and this grid. It's got plastic mesh filter that you would wash off with a mild soapy water towel dryer back uh -huh. here. Now, Scott, as this type of Pull one here, issue. pull one here, pull one here is going to fix that issue for you. Nope. Duly noted. And we're just going to turn this off. Now for the furnace, which one controls the furnace? The main one. Okay, so this one has no heat mode? Nope, it's just for this air conditioner. Okay. Detector here, carbon dioxide detector here. You hear that going off, you want to get out of your camper, get the fresh air. Call yourself an ambulance, you may need to be hospitalized if you do have carbon dioxide poisoning. 
Okay. Oops, sorry, big guy. I didn't even think about her. That's a big noise, huh? She did okay. well. All right, you have an emergency exit here. This window is on a hinge. This window is going to open up as wide as you need it to so that you can get out. If you push it too far, it will fall off, okay? Uh, if I could just make a suggestion, store a piece of dowel here so that you can prop this window open. You take your bed clothes, you throw them over the edge. If you need to go out this window, you want to go out this window feet first, belly down. Do not go out head first. It is a long distance from here to there. You will be injured. Going out feet first, belly down is going to give you an opportunity to grab a hold of the windowsill so that you can lower yourself to the ground gently. As we go back into the living area. Window feet first, belly down. Do not go out head first. You heard that one? Do not go out head first. Yeah, go out uh, feet first, belly down. Yes. Feet first, belly down. And then you have another smoke alarm up here. So you have two carbon monoxide alarms, an LP gas detector, you have a smoke alarm. Your smoke alarm and your carbon monoxide alarm in your bedroom have a battery, a 9 volt battery. If they start chirping, you're going to want to put a new battery in. Okay. This is a new camper. I can assure you those are new batteries. At least they haven't been used. Right. You did say that it was manufactured in June. Who knows how good they are. That is directly wired to your 12 volt battery. It does not require any maintenance at all. You have a small fire extinguisher here, emphasis on small. It's only meant to knock the fire back so that you can run and get help. Yeah, we go. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. So that's low. Low is going to be 750 watts. High is going to be 1500. You can adjust the temperature in automatic from 65 to 95 in five degree increments. Now that's going to warm this area up real nice for you. So if I can make a suggestion on a cool September morning or a cool wet September, October night, if you want to just turn this on and just get some moisture out of the air, turn your air conditioner on fan, that will circulate the heat through the rest of the coat. Keep in mind that this will only run off of one temp, so only if you're plugged into the wall. It's not heating your basement when you do that. It's only heating this area. Um, Go ahead. Inverter, it's not on the inverter. It is not. Good. Without doubt, because that will keep that battery up for a second. Oh, yeah. Which outlets are inverted? The refrigerator. This, this. Oh, inverted. I don't know off the top of my head. No. Okay. okay. I can in test. Mo yeah, in motorhomes, it's going to be the ones next to the bed. Sometimes it's a TV. I doubt that's going to be the case here but definitely in the refrigerator. Do you see this light? Yes. Okay, that light can be turned off in the settings. I'm gonna show you where that's at. In case you have somebody sleeping out here and that's on and it's bothersome to them, you can turn that off. Uh, does this have the WineGuard 360? It does. Okay. Your sound is coming through your... Growing nationwide protests continue to be a major talking point. This is the picture that you're getting off of your antenna inside this building with that big ace to pass port the doors down. it's still pulling in. It's still pulling in. If we were to go and do a channel scan on this outside, last time I did one in our back parking lot, I got 36 channels. Okay. I got WNEP out of Wilkesbury, which is about 70 miles away. Yeah, I've heard they're really good antennas. This one is probably the best I've seen. In, I guess it was about 18 months ago now, FCC came through and says, you got to rescan your TVs because we're changing the frequencies. We scanned them on the old antennas. Oh my God, it was terrible. It was like we lost everything. Mm. And then they started putting this wine guard on, and we're getting pictures like this, which is which is absolutely beautiful. Now, each time you change geographical locations, you will need to go to menu, you'll go over to channel, and come down to do a channel scan. If you switch over to cable, notice so we just switched over to cable, you do need to turn the antenna off. Okay. You turn the antenna off, the switch is going to be found up here. Notice that there's a green light on the other side of the coax cable. Okay, I see it. There's a little button right next to it. If you push that yep. in, that's going to turn the antenna off. So if I turn the antenna off, you see what happens to your picture. Your antenna is going to overpower any cable signal coming into the coach. Okay. So you need to turn that antenna off when you switch over to cable. Okay. Notice it automatically switched over to HDMI 2. That's what your DVD player is switched to, is uh, it's connected into. to. Okay. And if we go to inputs, 
you see you still have one and one three. And three components USB port back there for your Chromecast as you as you had mentioned. Awesome. Anyway, this is AM FM CD DVD MP3. It is Bluetooth capable. You'll be able to link your smartphone to this, play your playlist, Pandora, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever it is that you listen to on your smartphone. Um, it's a nice little system. There is a USB charge port here. There's an auxiliary port here. There's a small reset button here. Occasionally it gets cantankerous. So that's zone A. And then zone B, there is nothing connected to zone B. And we'll go to zone C. That's your outside speaker. Okay. You can have C and A on at the same time to really disturb the neighbors if you want to. Where are the speakers? The ones outside are attached to the side of the road. I, I saw those. LED light indicator that turns that little light off here for you if you need to or want to. Okay. These are rear remotes. Keep in mind that you do have storage in the center console. Probably a good place to store your. Here's your fireplace remote. In the green bag, we give you a black bag. In the black bag, you're going to find some light reading material. I'm sure there's nothing else in there. The owner's manual for your carbon monoxide detector that's in your bedroom, owner's manual for your smoke alarm that's in the hall, for your carbon monoxide LP gas detector that's down over here. The owner's manual for the thermostats. You have nitrogen filled tires. I don't know that we talked about nitrogen filled tires. All right, your, your coach was delivered to us with nitrogen filled tires. Little secret, Tom Schaefer's not a nitrogen filled station. If those tires needed air, we were putting air, regular air in there. My point being that if your tires need air, we want you keeping them inflated to 110 pounds per square inch. We don't want you running around looking for a nitrogen fill station. Yeah. This is for that uh, little charge port outside for that for that light. Owner's manual for your automatic changeover regulator. Remember we talked about lipper components. They want you to visit lci1.com or download the my LCI app. They don't print manuals anymore so everything can be found online I personally do not like the app the app is rather sluggish it's it, it lags the videos don't load very well I like the website better okay it's the owner's manual for your distribution center the owner's manual how to care for your floor for your converter this is what takes 110 power and converts it to 12 volt keeping your battery charged this is your inverter's owner's manual. This is what takes your battery 12 volt power, inverts it to 110, keeping your refrigerator running when the inverter is turned on and you're not plugged into a 110 outlet. The owner's manual for your stove and your oven, for your microwave convection oven, and then the owner's manual for your refrigerator. The owner's manual for air conditioner one and air conditioner number two. You asked about your wine Air 360. This is the owner's manual for that. The owner's manual for your DVD player, for your TV in the living room, and the owner's manual for the TV in the bedroom. The yeah. owner's manual for your toilet, the owner's manual for your water heater, the owner's manual for your furnace, for your slow up shades, and the installation instructions for that convection oven. The owner's manual for your fireplace. We're going to look at some numbers here. Your freshwater tank is 81. It is 100, so each tank is 50. They okay. do not fill together, they only drain out of the same port. Okay, they're separate tanks. And then your wastewater or your black tank is 53. Okay. All right. Now, as you go through all this paperwork, you're going to find a lot of these. These are owner's registration cards for each of your components. Mr. Schaefer strongly recommends that you fill these out, send them into the manufacturer. This way, the manufacturer is going to notify you directly of any safety or service recalls. Mr. Schaefer does not do that for you. So with that being said, I consider this to be the most important document in here. This provides you with the make, model, and serial number of each of your components. Oh, nice. Okay? I would make a copy of this with your smartphone and take a picture of it. Maybe make copies of it and paste it to the inside of one of the cabinet doors. This way it's always with the coach. If when you call us, if you can provide us with the make and the model of a particular component that you're having difficulty with, we have access to several databases where we can pull up owner's manuals, parts lists, schematics, 
safety and service recalls. It just helps us help you troubleshoot the difficulty you're having with that particular component. Now, with that being said, what Grand Design does in their infinite wisdom is they provide you with the web page address of each of the companies that they use for each of the components that they put in your coach. So if you sit down with this book, with this page open at your computer in this document, you have all the information that you need. You'll be able to register your components online. No sense in filling out these silly little cards. Does right. that make sense I to you? I plan on doing that. We the strongly week. recommend you do that for the simple reason is that Grand Design gives you a certain warranty period. Some of the manufacturers for your different components, like your air conditioner, your microwave, your stove, it may be a longer warranty period. So get that warranty period started so that you have them just in case there's any safety recalls also. Right. All right. So with that being said, I'd like to take these two important documents with your permission, secure them in this manila envelope so they're protected and easily identified. Place this manila envelope on this page so that when you're ready to register your components, you have all the information that, that you're going to need. For us. Now, earlier in the demo, I told you we talked about your Nautilus P1 system. What Grand Design does, and again, their infinite wisdom, is they provide you with the operator's manual or the user instructions for your Nautilus P1 system. Your Nautilus P1 system does nine different, has nine different functions. One thing that I do want to point out, while they do give you this congratulations on using your Nautilus P1 system, they want you to never depress the check valve on the city water connection, that's your city water connection there, because it will cause irreparable damage. That check valve has a little O-ring on it. If there is pressure on the lines when you push that in, like when you're doing your winterization, you'll push that O-ring out, and then it's not going to seal off for you. The easiest way to release the pressure on your, on your lines is to open up your low-point drains. They're right there. Open them up before you do your winterization process. Okay, would be my advice to you. I had told you that each of the instructions are extremely simple. They are one sentence instructions. They are not big paragraphs. They are color coded. Um, now whenever you're filling up, it says um, you fill until the overfill. Until comes out, yes. Uh, what's this? What's the difference there between the overfill? That you can create a siphon effect with that vent. And the way to correct that is just to stick your finger up there and to stop break that the siphon. siphon. Break that siphon. So the better the better thing to do is not to have it come out, fill it until it overfills. Eighty-one gallons is an awful lot of water unless yeah. you are doing unless you're doing some hard work. It's like we have a dive in the Holland yeah. and you just stick your finger in. Okay. <laughs> it's too true, Alicia though. It's true. Too true. true. Okay. So unless you're colorblind, okay? Right, color coded. If you cannot read, they have pictures for you. Okay. Now, earlier I had said that it was important that you know where the control module for your Schwintec design slide out is, which is up in the front cargo area. Yes. Correct? On the face of that, you are going to find how to manually override that particular slide out. Remember I showed you your manual override for these? Yep. Okay. The manual override for your Schwintec design is located right here. There's a small button here you're going to press seven times. On the seven times you're going to hold it until these two little lights light up, a little red and green light. That gives you 34 seconds. Why 34 seconds? I have no idea. That's just what I've heard and that's what I've read. To come and press that button in so you can bring that slide out in. What that's doing is that's putting max power to those two motors that we talked about earlier to bring this slide out in. Sometimes that's not going to correct the problem because the problem that you have is correctable. So they give you fault indicators also. The little green light is going to be for the motors, motor one and motor two, and then you have fault indicators on your red LED light, and it might be something from low battery power to too much power, a faulty ground, okay? If you cannot correct the problem, you need to get that slide out in. There are two clips that go right into here. You remove those clips. What that does is that releases the brake on those two motors. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you and half a football team will be able to push the slide out in. If you do have to push it in manually, you want to make sure that it comes in straight. If it comes in cockeyed, you're going to cause damage. And that's only going to cause you more problems than what you need. Once you get them 
it's that slide out pushed in. You want to re-engage those clips to re-engage the brake on the motor. The manufacturer is also going to recommend that you use a travel lock. The travel lock is nothing but a piece of board that is the length of your slide out that you're going to sit on the roof of the slide out when it's in. Does that make sense to you? So it's going yeah. to sit between the frame and the wall so the slide out doesn't slide out while you're driving down the road. So that's, they Does recommend that using that if you have to manually? If you have to manually bring okay. it in or push it in. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. All right. Very good. Now, when you're operating your Shun Tech Design slide out, we don't want you playing Morse code with that button. In other words, I don't want you going on, off, on, off, on, off. Well, what's it doing now? Oh, right? It's all the way in or all the way out, unless you're doing maintenance or you have an emergency, okay? Because those two motors are talking to each other through that box. And what they're doing is they're counting each other's revolutions. So if you play Morse code with the button, you may mount, you might amp out one motor to zero, the other one's gonna be on 23, that slide out's gonna start coming in crooked. That can be corrected if you visit lci1.com or download the My LCI app. They have troubleshooting videos on there and you have your owner's manuals there that you can read to overcome that problem. Do not take your finger off the button, okay, until it is all the way in and you hear what I can only describe as a hiccup. Remember I told you that they wind their whiners? Mm -hmm. At the end of their travel length, they are going to hiccup. It's the only way that I can describe it. What that is doing is that means that both motors are amping out to zero. Okay, so we want to hear that. You might hear one go, and then the other one go, you might hear them go together. But you want to keep your finger on that button until you hear those noises and then count to three. One, two, three, take your finger off the button. That's whether you're letting it out or bringing it in. Okay, we okay. want those two motors to resync. Now, I talk about slide out safety each time I do a demo for a camper that has slide outs. I had a young couple one time that brought their camping expert with them. It was their Uncle Joe. He had a camper for 15 years. That made him an expert. So I'm talking about slide out safety, and there's Uncle Joe behind the kids, and he's just shit it and grin on them. You know, and I say, You've got a story to tell, don't you? Mm -hmm. goes, yeah, I do. He goes, Jimmy goes, You're absolutely right. He says, For 14 years, he says, I was a smart ass, and I got away with it. He says, you're, you're right, I would park as close as I can get to my neighbor's campsite so I can maximize my camping space. And what I did was I had a template. It was basically an old broomstick that I had at home that I cut that was the length of my slide out when it was out. And I would jump out of the truck after I parked the camper, I'd walk down the side of my camper, and then I'd walk back towards my truck. If I hit something, I would move over. If I didn't hit anything, I knew I was good to put my slide outs out and I can start my camping experience. He goes, here I was that fateful day. He says, I parked my camper as close as I can get to the neighbor's campsite. I jump out, I walk down the side of the camper one way, I walk back the other, I didn't hit anything. And there I am, I'm standing at the control panel and I put my slide outs out and I'm talking to my wife while she's setting up the campsite. Next thing I know, I'm covered in glass. He said, Jim, I saw that sign post. I didn't take into consideration the sign and the sign came through the mirror. So you got the pot sign post and you got the sign on the sign post and the sign came through the mirror. It was an expensive experience for him. I don't want to see that happen to you. So whenever you're operating, whether you're bringing them in or letting them out, please make sure that you have a spotter on the outside. You have a nice big window there. You have cell phones, whatever. However you need to communicate, but you want to have a spotter on the outside. The reason being is that you are going to park as close as you can get to your neighbor's campsite so that you can maximize your camping space. All right? If you are two inches too close to a low limb you just didn't see, to a stump, to a tree, to the pedestal where you're getting your water, your electric, and your cable. Two inches too close and you're going to be damaging your camper. Don't want to see that happen. Absolutely. Okay. With that being said, I want to say congratulations. Alicia, congratulations. I wish the best of luck with your new camper. Yay. Now, with you having the keys, that means the demo is over. So I'm done touching switches. It's going to be your turn. I am going to be here to guide you and to walk you through the steps that you're going to need to follow. So, with that being said, let's turn our air conditioner off so that when we unplug, we're not damaging our air conditioner. I think we left the one in the bedroom off, oh, but please go check. Oh, it's heading up there to check it. It is off. Lights off. Uh... Be yours as to whether or not you want to use them. There are D-rings in the floor. The answer is yes. All right, very good. Now I've had some customers say that all they do 
is they lay one down with this chair like this. They don't drive like maniacs, but things do happen. They said they never had a problem with their chairs. What I like to do... Oh, if I can make a suggestion. As your camper matures... Your chairs, I like that. This table may get loose. There are only four screws that hold it down. You may get the urge to and go to the hardware store and get six inch lag bolts so this never moves again. Please resist that urge. Okay? I have had two customers in my tenure here who have actually done that. Six and inch it, lag bolts. They went through the floor. Where did they think when it they goes? They brought their slide out in, they ripped up their linoleum. So be careful. Uh, I bet. <laughs> well, I had one customer who had show dogs and mm. border collies mm -hmm. and he took all this stuff out and he put his kennels in here and he bolted them to the floor when he bolted them to the floor he went through the floor brought the slide brand spanking gotcha. new hello sweetheart sorry oh she's Let's just happy it. you're on her level i bet i would be happy too if i were you but i'm happy now the sofas seat. are screwed down as well as the table they right? are secured to the floor yes okay yep for a work table <laughs> oh. Now, once you fill these, you may not want to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. See, it's all part of the learning process. Mm. Just figuring out where the buttons are. That's why we do this. I'm here to guide you if you need. Right? Correct. Up is in. Ready. You hear that whine? Some people liken it to a vacuum cleaner. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. So keep your finger on that button until I tell you to take it off. We're going to listen for the hiccup. It's going to be coming soon. Hear the hiccup from the two motors, two, three, take your finger off the button. Heard the hiccup. Heard oh, exactly hiccup. what you're talking about. Now I want to come take a look at this. Okay, we can get into that one. We can sort of get into this guy, but this you, is easy. You didn't lift the bed out before you did that. Oh, that's true. I oh, think shit. you can okay. get into both of them. Yeah, you can get into both the top ones. Yeah. Okay, so that just means that one bottom one you can't get into. Okay. So that's where we need to put all the important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we're not going very far, baby. The gunk, 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 gotcha, huh? The gunk, 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 we'll get her. That confused her. Oh, wait, the wall's moving. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Did it exactly what's happening. Okay. We're crazy, baby. Normally, we have you in the truck right now. Air conditioning. Yes, it's spoiled. I know. Perfect. Okay. Now, what were you doing guiding out there? You had your hand on it. What were you doing? I just being. What is it? After one now? <laughs> we, we've been together for five hours. Yeah. <laughs> So the fridge is still on, the inverter is on. Hold on a second. Think about what you just said. The fridge is still on. Why would it be on? Because we still have electricity. Correct. We still have 110. Yeah. If I can point something out. Go, go ahead. Remember I said about travel locks? The distance between here and here for that one end is what I was talking about. You just set it on the roof. You want to remember that you have it up there when you go to let it out. Yeah, well, that would be kind of bad. It just won't work. Probably. I'm sorry, I must have missed those travel locks. Um, if you manually operate the uh, Schwintek and you you pull the brake, uh, you pull the plug so you release the brake on it and you manually push it in. You put a travel lock. Then they recommend that you put a travel lock on top of it. Okay, yeah. You engage, you re-engage the plug so it does re-engage the uh, electronic brake, but they say you better put a travel lock on there anyway. Okay, it's coming back. To me. Safety first. Can never be safe. All right. Turn your hallway light off, and then we'll continue.
continue on here. Where's the hallway light? About here, okay? As long as those two seals are making contact and you've, you've conditioned those seals properly, you shouldn't have any problems. Okay. Uh, it's just, uh, I've seen yep. some of these rigs where they stop it and yep. it's like this. It's like, yeah, well, it's, it's about that far at the top, but at the bottom, you can almost put your fist in there. Yeah, that would need the adjustment. That one finger, right? Yeah, I wasn't pivoting. The deadbolt unlocked, and you just want to lock the paddle latch because there are master keys for the paddle latch. There are not master keys for the deadbolt. Okay, so at this point, we're done with this, I'll lock it up. Pull up. Perfect. Up towards me. Gotcha. That's up. That's pretty low clearance. Let's see. You want to go back? Yep, yeah, just a little bit. Another nice thing about having a goose stick. Okay, straighten it out. So, we need to come up another inch. Yeah, we also have to move over. Yep, because I'm too far over to the... So um, if, we use, if we use our ridges here as a guide, so your center is right here, yep. you have to come over quite a bit. So use, use something as a reference. If you want to turn a light on, we can turn a light on. Um, no, I don't need the light on, but I do understand what you're saying. Some people, what some people will do is once they get hooked up, they will use the back part of the fender here put a piece of tape here. Like so that when they're looking in the rear view mirror, they have, a, they have a reference point as to where they need to be with this so that they're right on. Well, we just got this truck a week ago. Yep. Um, we're putting a backup camera in, uh, uh, time out backup camera okay. so that we can watch the bed. Okay. That'll help. It sure will. In the time being, or the meantime, we gotta do it the hard way. <laughs> a little bit. And it's still going to sit into socket. Exactly. I want to be looking for what you're looking for. Okay, the center. We're going to be on the center of this. Mm -hmm. And we want our hole as close to this center point. Okay. between our tailgate and here. Remember, if you're coming in at an angle, you might not have that space. Exactly, something that you want to pay attention to. All right? You're pretty much under, underneath the bolt. Actually, we're a bit higher than what we need to be. Right. None that here, they're there. Okay, so I need to come down so I can get a better idea of if I need to uh, reposition. Yes. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you'd be able to drop it right on the wall. See somebody put white lithium grease on there? That was Scott. Couldn't get any better, could you? That nailed it. Okay, let's stop there. I'm gonna tell you why in a second. Just for the pull test, we're just off the ground. Exactly. Okay. So I'm preaching some choir now. <laughs> what did you just do? 
I just lowered the lever. Notice the arm is now at the green locked position. It was in the red unlocked. See, it was like, I'll be right back, Scott. Okay. It was like this. Now it's like that. How is that locked? There's a bar that swings in underneath and captures the ball. So that is the unlocked position. And that is the locked position. What are those attached to? Are they attached to the frame? They're attached to the trailer plate. So they're bolted to the frame with um, a bunch of half inch grade eight bolts. Yeah, this is the Reese B&W, uh, sorry, the, not B&W, it's the B&W turnover ball, which is, as far as I can tell, one of the um, better systems. It's on there for now, but... Where's your other one? I'll be right back. Awesome, thank you. There he goes. cable I don't know about that one I mean I guess I could fasten it to the same thing here what I are you cannot thinking? fasten this with about I here? was thinking back there but I'm worried about making a sharp uh, left I would, turn I would be too because what by there that's probably good That's not going to be good because, yeah, that won't work. Oops, sorry. So you're going to go to that shape? Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to the shackle, but I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to get a different shackle here. Um, How about this? Hold on, I've got a big carabiner clip. Nope, carabiner's not going to cut it. Okay. Unless it's a strong one. Huh? We'll fit in now. No, it can't clear the bolt. All right, here. What you're going to do is you're going to thread the wire through. Yeah, thread the wire and loop it back over. Yes. It'll have the same effect for you. May I install this or did you want to do it? Uh, I'll take care of it. Very good, sir. Okay. Now we're good to go. Go transfer this from here, put it down there. And that from there and put it up here. Just so they don't have anything dangling? Exactly. A little whip it. Your choice. NBD, no big deal. Okay. We turned off all the air conditioner. Okay. Now we keep plugging it home. We keep plugging it in for Is that too tight? No, I was just thinking about tight. If, if it's better to plate this one or this cable's so big and stiff that I'm trying to decide if I can plate the cable or not. 
he's very particular about his table. Hey. I just stand back. It's probably best. It is. Wait till it gets to 41 degrees, that turns into a stick. <laughs> you giggle, it's true. Oh no, I don't doubt it. We're gonna do trailer lights. Left, right, brakes, and forward. Wales, yeah, you're not hitting the under carriage Sounds of your good. camper. So, while you're retracting the wall, you're gonna turn your system back on, scroll through your menu, retract all, enter to begin. Nope, enter to begin. Oh, enter. Duh. And now it's making sure that all your jacks are retracted. You're gonna pull that pin, make sure that everything's hooked up the way it's going. Sure. Let me see if the other one's e easier to pull. Okay. Yeah, that one's easier. This is about what I expected. That other one I think is jammed. Okay, let me try this one. One more time. There it goes. It just took a little bit more of a... Careful with your fingers under there. It'll go down, but oh, okay, it went up. Okay, there is something that's not quite right with this guy. Okay. Not wanting to go back in. Okay, I'll fix that for you. It's going to be invaluable to you. Okay. It's great for the lock. Give that a shot two, three times a year. Yeah. They'll keep them smooth. You want to keep you look at on. the other end of the pin. It's not lined up. It looks like the pin is bent. right now. I see you right there. I don't know if, it's, if that bracket is out of alignment. This one, yeah, this just needs to be tilted up. Uh, let me grab some wrenches real quick. Okay. Thanks, okay. man. One side is closer to seven inch, one side is closer to eight, but we're kind of cocked at an angle a little bit. That'll level out once we start rolling. So I'm happy. Yeah. 
plastic washer on the inside. Perfect. Yep. Thanks, Lydia. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Jim just brought out his measuring sticks and uh, took a measure of the height of the rig and it's right at 13 feet. That's awesome, that's great. That gives us even more clearance. The problem is, he was mentioning a lot of cities or whatever will repave a road and not bother changing the sign. And that'll lead up an extra four inches in no time. Like Jim said, it'll literally it'll heat it up overnight. We're gonna be really careful with this. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. We are the root of it all. She's Alicia. He's Scott. And we really appreciate you. Hit that like button, and if you haven't already, the subscribe button's right down there too. Subscribe to the video so that we can keep in touch. And if you also, if you think you have friends and family who would enjoy it, please share the root of it all with them. We'd love your help in growing our channel. We'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye.